for the strength and conditioning coaches um, listening in, what are some some tools that you've uh, used in the past to, I guess, uh, develop buy-in from athletes that might be only focusing on those things that you're talking about, the shiny performance side of things and maybe disregarding their health? Anytime you can take something subjective and turn it more objective, it's a big win um, mm. because that's going to help with, with the whole buy-in factor. If an athlete recall a time that uh, they had the flu or recall a time that they um, uh, had food poisoning or recall a time that uh, they were sleep deprived and were, they definitely were not performing at their best and they were probably searching for like, what is going on? Why can't I like, man, I feel terrible. No matter how well they prepared for that game or that practice or that, that tournament or whatever it was, they definitely don't feel like they're at their best. And when you can take that and turn it over into data, that's where things really start to change. And um, I did my postgraduate work in heart rate variability, sleep and recovery science, did a lot of um, uh, work in the lab and then from the lab to uh, practical application in, in real life settings at Miami and then um, in, in Anaheim and, and San Diego. And being able to utilize heart rate variability as a metric of understanding how your body's adapting to stress and strain is a great mm. indicator of health optimization. What would be your favorite sort of duration, do you think, for, doesn't necessarily have to be optimal, but I guess for, um, what would yeah, be so when I say there? a passive read, when I say a passive read, it would be a device that's already pulling it and collecting it for you. So you don't actually, like, you should not have to lay down and collect it passively from, like, uh, sorry, you shouldn't have to lay down and collect it actively. Uh, so mm -hmm. there shouldn't be a three, five, 10 minute protocol. Um, mm -hmm. Whoop grabs HRV in a passive way while you're sleeping. You wake up, you've got your HRV score there. Aura mm -hmm. does the same thing. Um, mm -hmm. uh, quite frankly, Apple Watch does the same thing. Uh, a lot of your wearable devices, uh, I mean, Polar Garmin, um, BioStrap, they all, measure HRV uh, over the course of uh, the night. Uh, but you want to get your HRV ideally during that last sleep stage before you wake up, mm -hmm. as that's where you're going to be most parasympathetic. Uh, so you're going to be uh, most relaxed in that state. And so it's going to give us a really good indication of how our body's adapting to the stress and strain that we've been under for the last 24 to 48 hours. It's pretty accessible technology. It's not all that expensive these days. Are there ones that you prefer when you're consulting with teams and athletes over others, like from a reliability point of view, or are they all generally speaking pretty good? these days yeah when it, when it comes back to hrv there's two two companies that are leading the way that um that, that do a great job one is uh one is whoop and the other is aura um on grabbing passive heart rate variability now the other thing becomes as an athlete do you want to be wearing a ring or uh do you want to be wearing a uh a wrist strap it's just mm. that's pretty much your personal preference at that point um, but both of those have leading are leading the way in terms of um, data collection, in terms of accuracy, in terms of reliability, uh, all the things that you want um, controlled in uh, in a research based environment. They're doing it. They're 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 definitely leading the way. And for the coaches listening in um, that are interested to what get their athletes or maybe present at a club about the investing in some technology in this space. Uh, from a practical point of view, are you looking at it uh, at a certain time in a day because you're getting all the athletes doing in the morning? So, you know, 10 a.m. every day you're checking in over it uh, or is it more something that you're looking at um, more thoroughly on a monthly point of view, weekly point of view for trends of that athlete? Like what's sort of your way of uh, processing the data, I guess? One, we provide education to that coaching staff, educate them on how do we communicate, how do we create a more integrated system through athletic training, nutrition, um, strength and conditioning, your sport coach, your administration, how do we create that integrated model that everybody now has a, um, a base level of communication, a, a common language that everybody can lean on. Second is uh, somebody within our team, uh, we've got a team of 38 um, uh, HRV, heart rate variability specialists, uh, people that have been at the NFL, NHL, Major League Baseball, NCAA, uh, US military level. 
Mm-hmm. Um, and we attach that person to uh, as a consultant for you that helps guide this. Um, and then the, fr- the, the dashboard and framework that we have is it's being able to not only recommend certain habits to uh, and, and controllables to athletes um, based upon their data. So it's again, curated for them, but the dashboard on the coach's side is able to now see, Hey, where's, where's athlete a trending? Are we trending down over the last three, four days? Or are we trending up over the last three or four days? What controllables does this athlete have on? And what's the habit adherence to these controllables and habits? Are we actually seeing positive changes in, in behavior change? Are we seeing negative changes in behavior change? 